hello everyone. Uh, my name is Kuldeep Gill. Uh, I'm the author for this paper and uh, my co-author and my advisor is Professor Alexander Biglinski. So I'm going to present the paper on Bumblebee inspired CV2X dynamic spectrum access testbed using open air interface. So in this paper, we have explored how a vehicular dynamic spectrum access framework for distributed V2V can be applied using Bumblebee uh, behavior model. So Bumblebee's foragers, they also work in similar complex uh, varying environment where the rewards are varying, which is very much simpler, uh, similar to vehicles in a time varying uh, stochastic channel envi environment. Uh, the next slide. Uh, these are the table of contents. So first I'm going to start with the introduction where I'm going to explain the Bumblebee dynamic spectrum access model. Then I'm going to uh, go towards the open interface testbed. So this is the open source platform which we are using to test our algorithm for cellular V2X uh, communication system. Uh, and then in section three, I'm going to present our measurements and results. And finally, I'll conclude the chapter, uh, conclude this presentation with the section four. Uh, next slide. Okay, uh, so FCC allocated 75 megahertz of spectrum for dedicated short range communication in 1997, and then they finalized it around 2003. But the, the DSRC did not make uh, much uh, advancements. So FC, FCC, then they rechanged, uh, reallocated this spectrum for CB2X and for uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, so in this uh, work, we are using CB2X because it has several benefits uh, like latency, uh, centralized uh, scheduling mechanism uh, against uh, 802.11p DSRC. So, but we know since uh, this six channels won't be enough in future because of the uh, uh, high demand for connected vehicles, we need to uh, look for other solutions. So right now there are two possible solutions which can be uh, employed to take care of the scarcity. First is to look for uh, higher MM wave uh, channels uh, around 60 gigahertz, something which can be used for V2V communication. The other solution is to employ vehicular dynamic spectrum access to lower frequencies. So in dynamic spectrum access, we leverage underutilized spectrum. So in this work, we are looking at a DTV. Uh, it's a UHF band from 470 to 520 megahertz. So to make this feasible, we are employing a full duplex radio. So one radio chain will uh, maintain a continuous cellular V2X communication channel. The other is used for spectrum sensing and finding those opportunities to enable dynamic spectrum access. Uh, next slide. So first I'll explain how the bumblebee works. So bumblebees, they also forage in the similar time varying environment where the nectar rewards in flowers are changing. So nectar rewards, let's assume that's a signal to interference noise ratio, which uh, uh, explains the quality of the channel and the bees, those are the vehicles. So they are foraging. They are trying to find the best channel out of all these uh, uh, flowers. So step one is to sample, to sample all the channels. In step two, they collect the nectars from the most rewarding species. In vehicular domain, that's uh, switching to that channel, which, which is giving the best SNR performance. So in step three, they continue using that channel, they continue transmitting and also monitoring the reward or SNR level. So if SNR drops, you can, based on the memory, you can switch to a better channel. So in step four, that's what they're saying. Like if the current flower reward drops, if the SNR for the channel degrades, you can switch to a better uh, channel based on the memory. Uh, next slide. So this is the pseudocode for our Bumblebee-based VDSA algorithm. So SC is the subcarrier sub -carrier list. T is the threshold. C is the switching cost. So I'm going to explain about switching cost more in detail, like uh, further. And S is the current subcarrier uh, energy level, subcarrier list energy level. So in our algorithm, we are using two radios. Uh, so these two radios are mounted on the same uh, hardware. Uh, 
so we have two daughter boats which are sbx daughter boats uh, which work around 4 me uh, 400 megahertz to 4.4 gigahertz frequency range uh, and so one is used for spectrum sensing the other is used for cv2x so we start by initializing radio zero which is our cv2x at 2.685 gigahertz that's the lte band 7 and then we start sampling with our radio one so radio one will perform spectrum sensing so this spectrum sensing is time domain spectrum sensing in dtv band for thousands of frames so thousands of frame is equivalent to one second which is one frame and then based on the threshold we select the best sub carriers we configure our radio zero with the selected sub carriers and then we start the transmission so in transmission interval as we are uh, doing the transmission with uh, radio zero we simultaneously mo uh, monitor our current uh, sub carrier list using radio zero uh, so if the sinr uh, snr sinr level holds we'll keep using the same sub channels but if the performance degrades we switch to the new channel so what is the c switching cost in this case so switching cost is if you don't have any switching cost you keep as soon as your snr degrades by 5 db 6 db you switch to new channel with this constant switchings the performance will degrade because you're not doing anything useful you aren't transmitting any packets you are just uh, wasting uh, uh, time in switching so that's why we have this c switching cost that uh, reduces the unnecessary switching uh, next slide so now i'll uh, i'll go over the test bed employed for our algorithm a vds algorithm so this is uh, oai open source uh, open AI interface 5g so this is a flexible platform for uh, testing out lte algorithm so let's say if you have a uh, uh, you, you have a software defined radio you get a quartz ue you can actually build a realistic 4g platform using these two and you can test out different protocols in our case we are using uh, lte mode 4 which uses pc5 interface uh, out of coverage that is we don't need uh, centralized e node b to uh, perform scheduling in our case we do random uh, sub channel scheduling across a particular uh, frequency block so it's an open source software based implementation that they use a c for the whole uh, protocol stack uh, and it's, you can customize it anyhow you want and uh, it can be connected to quartz ue let's say commercial uh, smartphones or you can also connect to a soft another software defined radio where you want to analyze the log files like through each layer radio link control mac fi everything can be tunable uh, next slide so these are our modifications for creating our uh, dsa test bed so we modified the fi and mac layer so in fi layer we have added the functionality to perform the spectrum sensing. So since we are using two uh, daughter boats, to perform, uh, one for CV2X, one for spectrum sensing, we need a mechanism to exchange that information that these are the sub, uh, sub channels which we have selected uh, like the opportunity. So the CV2X can be uh, uh, initialized to these uh, sub channels. So we are using two NIUSRP X310 SDR radios. Uh, and these X310, like I said, these are full duplex radios. So that means they uh, support independent operation. So that means uh, simultaneously we can do both. We can keep transmitting and receiving packets uh, using uh, side link communication and uh, we can monitor the DTV band. So for spectrum sensing, we are using something called time domain energy detection. So the reason for using time domain is to avoid the computation cost uh, which comes uh, by taking the FFT. So since we wanted to uh, do the, the uh, spectrum sensing faster uh, to keep the uh, real time operation, we have uh, chosen time domain energy detection. Next slide. So this is the uh, protocol stack for uh, LTE mode four side link. Uh, so we are using side link PC5. So uh, the re rest of the four layers are similar to LTE and we, uh, so uh, since we are using, uh, we are running this system on our uh, 
desktop uh, and we are using linux so we are using linux ip stack so this is the modification in file we are adding our bumblebee based dsc algorithm so it's added on one of the uh, x310 next one so now i'm going to present the measurements and results so this is the uh, testbed parameters uh, for our x310 radios so since uh, in release 15 for CV2X mode 4, they have supported two bandwidths. One is 10 megahertz and 5 megahertz. So that's why we have tested with both. The sampling net, which we are using, is 15.36 million samples per second. FFT wind resolution is uh, 1024. So we are using word 2450 antennas. Uh, so they have a gain of a gain around 3 dBi. So the CV2X dedicated frequency, the one which we initialize before we run our experiments, it's around uh, LTE band 7, uh, downlink 2.68. 5 gigahertz, and the frequency band for DTV, uh, UHF band, where we are doing the opportunistic uh, spectrum access, it's around 470 megahertz to 520 megahertz. Uh, next slide. So this is the uh, diagram of our uh, test bed. So we have two XC10. So one XC10 acts as a transmitter. So that's the one which will uh, select the uh, DSA band. So that has a word 2450 sensing radio. And we are using SMA wired uh, links because we don't. So LTE band seven, it's a de dedicated band. It's not unlicensed. So we can't uh, use that without FCC coming after us. So that's why we haven't used it. Uh, and we are using OctoClock and GPSDO to provide frequency and timing synchronization. So uh, it looks like that. So we have a vehicle one, which is uh, doing spectrum sensing. Uh, to find the opportunities in DT, uh, DTV spectrum. And it's also maintaining a continuous CV2X link with vehicle 2. So vehicle 2 is just acting as a receiver. It's not doing anything. So uh, next slide. So these are the, this is the spectrogram uh, for DTV band. So these are the opportunities. So as we can see, so on the, on the right side, we have the opportunities in the frequency domain. So, so the one which are, used, uh, like the two frequency blocks are occupied. So this spectrogram goes from minus, minus 90 dBm to minus 40. That's, what, that's how we have plotted it. And on the left side, we have opportunities in time. The good thing about cellular V2X is we can uh, employ the, we can use the, utilize the opportunities both in frequency domain and in time domain based on our subcarrier allocation. So uh, next slide. So this is the actual uh, uh, open -air interface uh, running plot. So we are plotting while we are maintaining the CV2X. So on the left side, we have a radio zero, which is performing CV2X. So as we can see, this is how the uh, LTE uh, uh, spectral mass looks uh, at 2.68, uh, five uh, gigahertz. And on the right side, we have our radio one, which is performing the sensing at DTV band. So they are both occurring at the same time in a real time uh, scenario. Uh, so I'm going to uh, explain both in details in the next slides. Uh, so this is a uh, radio zero performing a CV2X. So uh, since we are employing five megahertz, so there are only 25 physical resource blocks which are used. So uh, uh, radio zero is doing that. We have also uh, uh, ran for, uh, 10 megahertz, which employs 50 physical resource blocks to compare how they both perform. Uh, next slide. So in this, sorry, uh, next, next. So in this slide, we are explaining uh, the DTV. So that it's performing the sensing of the DTV channel uh, 19 using radio one. So as we can see, uh, so these are the uh, narrow band uh, sub uh, uh, narrow band utilization. So we want to avoid this. So the way we uh, our uh, radio uh, radio one uh, allocates the subcarrier, it selects the best five megahertz band, and then uh, chooses the random subcarriers uh, uh, across that block. So we didn't do subcarrier level resolution because it's very difficult. It's it's it. Uh, so that's how going to be our future work. In this work, we select the best five megahertz block based on our uh, uh, time uh, domain uh, sensing, and then we deploy the uh, sub-channels across that block. Uh, next. So 
next 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 okay so uh, this is where we are comparing the latency so the reason for doing this so since it's up to us which channel bandwidth we want to use so uh, let's say if the channel quality is a very good we can go for 10 megahertz if channel quality is not that good we can go for 5 megahertz but doing that if you are using 10 megahertz the latency will be higher because we need to uh, the uh, because of the uh, sam uh, subframe sizes we need to add uh, like uh, do the time domain energy detection we want to add those samples and based on the memory size the latency will be more so that's a trade off let's say if you want to use 10 megahertz using our vds algorithm there will be more latency in more but since uh, it's for better channel conditions this thing can be doable so this is the conclusion so I, uh, we have implemented the vds algorithm using a open source uh, platform uh, uh, for lte system so we have performed the switching from lte band 7 which is at 2.68 gigahertz to dtv spectrum around 5 megahertz so in this work we have shown the feasibility of c uh, dynamic spectrum access using the cv2x lte mode 4 which is out of coverage scenario in future we are going to conduct an on road study where we we mount the full duplex radios on our on our vehicles and we'll uh, compute the performance and also we are going to modify the mac layer in a way that we can get a sub carrier uh, level scheduling uh, resolution so thank you